Hello, and welcome to Mascotting 101, the perfect mascot training for you. Myself and our Mickey Mouse mascot are going to be training you in this video about what mascot performances are about, ranging from the performance to the do's and the don'ts. You will also learn about how to deal with certain types of children. Firstly, always remain constant motion. As a character, it's your job to look animated and silly, whilst maintaining the idea of your character as being real. Always have a friendly attitude. At times, you will need a handler to walk with you as costume vision is very limited. Before you even get into the costume, it's good to study and learn your character as best as you can to have the right attitude of your mascot. It's always a good idea to make sure that your costume is not in need of any maintenance before you go into public areas, as it could ruin the magic if someone points it out. You must never take off any part of the costume in public. If you need to fix any issues or take a break, you must move into a private changing area room where you can cool off with a towel or a bottle of water. Suiting up. When putting on your mascot costume, you must always make sure that there are no gaps or exposed skin while you are wearing the costume, before going out in public. Having a look in a mirror is the best way to do this. Performing. You should always maintain a happy emotion, unless appropriate, with constant motion. You may be excused if a photo is being taken with a child or an adult. Glasses are often a bad idea to wear under the suit, as they can steam up and fog. Emotions are the best way to show animation and act out your moves. Happy. Any upbeat, kind gesture can work with the emotion happy. On the other end of the spectrum, we have the emotion sad. Head and shoulders limp and slouched, wiping a tear away is the best way to show sadness. This can transition into a sad walk. Stressed. Putting both hands to the side of your face and shaking back and forth in fear is the easy way to look stressed. Shy. A timid emotion while initially looking away is the best way to show shyness. This emotion is very valuable. It can help a scared child to be less afraid. Suave. Running your hands through your mascot's fur is a great way to make your character look suave. It's important that you use it at appropriate times. Exhausted After long events, you'll be very tired and exhausted. Use this emotion to show either kids or your helper that you need to take a break. Head tilt. You can achieve many motions with a simple head tilt. The angle of the head tilt will help to try and display what emotion you're looking to show. For example, disappointment. Gestures. Let's go over some of the basics that you'll need to know as a mascot. Hello, or welcome. This is the most common gesture that you'll use as a mascot, to welcome guests through the door. Goodbyes. Goodbyes are sad, shown with a mellow wave to say goodbye to guests who are leaving. Blowing kisses. With this gesture, make sure you're selling the emotion. Blowing kisses is a great gesture as long as it's done at appropriate times. Chivalry. A tip of the cap or a bow gesture is a respectful way to acknowledge authority figures or women. Now that you've learnt the basic gestures, 
let's go over the essential do's and don'ts of being a mascot. Do number one, always remain in character. Once you put on your mascot suit, you should instantly take on your mascot's character. When you're performing, there is always somebody watching. So it's important to be playful, animated and enthusiastic at all times. Do number two, constant motion is a must. You're an entertainer. It's important that you're always moving and going from one place to another. However, remember to keep constant walk when going from one place to the next. Do number three, have fun. Now we're going to learn the opposite side of the rules, the don'ts, which are just important as the do's. Don't number one, never speak. This is the number one rule of mascotting. Unless it is an absolute emergency, you must never talk while in costume. If an emergency arises and you need to talk, make sure you do it in a private room. Otherwise, learn to use your creativity and your emotions whilst performing. Don't number two, never pick up kids. Picking up kids can be very dangerous, and kids of all ages can be squirming, and there's a chance you could drop them. Some parents absolutely insist that you hold their child. Should this happen, simply drop down on one knee or sit down. Don't number three, never take your suit off around the public. Seeing a mascot without its head can be very traumatic for kids. If you need to remove a part of the costume, make sure you do it in a private area. The final section will go over the three types of children, or the three T's of children. The first type stands for terrific children. These children love mascots, they're excited and treat you with respect. And oftentimes these children range from 4 to 10 years old. Follow all the basic rules and guidelines and these children will continue to be your biggest fans. The second T stands for terrified children. These are the children who often scream or run away when they see mascots. Most of the time these children are younger in age. In order to deal with these kinds of children, you must follow these steps. Step 1 is to mark your distance. Take one or many steps back to try and calm the child. Step 2 is to drop your level. Mascots are tall, so it's important to get either down on one knee or completely sit down so that you are less intimidating. Step 3 is to play games like peekaboo. Waving can be just as powerful tool when trying to win over a terrified child. Step 4 is to look away. Often children will be afraid if a mascot appears to be staring at them. Looking away can help you seem less creepy. Step 5 is to keep smiling. This means to maintain a positive body gesture and attitude. Step 6 is to offer your hand to pet. Terrified children may be more inclined to approach if they realise that your suit is soft and furry. Step 7 is to interact with the parents. High-fiving or hugging a parent can make children realise that a mascot is nice and friendly, not scary. Step 8 is just to walk away. Some kids may never get over their fear of mascots. The third T stands for terrifying children. These are the children who want to hit, poke, taunt or mess with the mascots. But you could deal with them by following a set of steps. Step 1 is to calmly diffuse the situation. Be playful, try to get the child to divert their attention from harassing you to interacting with you. Step 2 is the hearty handshake. This is a handshake where you should apply enough pressure to let the kid know that they should stop, but not too much to cause any harm. If the child won't stop, ask for help and walk away. Dealing with children can be one of the toughest parts of being a mascot, but it can also be the most rewarding. You'll encounter all types of children, but always remember to follow these steps and have fun. Happy mascotting.